Three tricks Walmart doesn't want you to know. Have you ever been at the store and someone asks you if you want to try a free sample or a new product? Well, a scientist said when you take the free sample, it makes your brain think it's dinner time, making you want to buy it. They sometimes put items on sale to make you think like you're getting a better deal. When in reality, they put the sale price as what they would normally sell it for as retail. You may think they just throw products on the shelves randomly, but they actually do it strategically. The top shelf has smaller brands, regional brands, and gourmet brands. They put them there to give tone and texture to the shelf, to help the store stand out from its competitors. The two shelves below are where they put the top selling brand, because it's at the customer's eye level giving them a higher chance of buying it. Below that are the kids shelves, where they usually place child appealing items making the kids want to ask their parents if they could buy it. And finally on the very bottom they have the local brands and bulk items. This man swam in a cave but never returned and a few years later the police found out the shocking truth. After going through financial difficulty and being $50,000 in debt, Ben McDonald needed an escape from reality. He decided to go explore the caves at a nearby park called Vortex Spring. Even though a certificate was required to go cave diving, he jumped in the water in the restricted zone anyway and two of the park employees seen him go into it. But he wasn't spotted at his house for the next two days. His truck was still parked outside of the park with his wallet in it and none of his neighbors had seen him. The local authorities began a search and rescue in the entire park but after weeks of searching they still hadn't found anything. So they called an expert cave diver named Ed Sorensen. The police were sure he would find his body because he was diving deeper than they had gone before. But he couldn't find anything and the case was classed as an unsolved mystery. Until a few years later when a park employee was mysteriously murdered. Apparently he had heard information about Ben's disappearance which was actually a murder. The reason why none of Ben's remains were found is because they were removed from the crime scene. And the two park employees were paid by someone to leave before Ben returned to the surface. Many people believe he was killed because he got into illegal activity trying to pay off his debt. She didn't know she had cancer until she was on live television. Nicole McGuinness wanted a house near the beach. She even went on the TV show called Beach House Bargain Hunt. On the show, she looked happy about the house hunt with her dad. But if you look at her closely, you could see a small bump on her throat. Dr. Eric Void was watching the show at home. He's an ear, nose, and throat surgeon. He said that he felt obligated to let her know that she had something in case she didn't already know. Because as an expert in the field, he felt concerned for her. He used social media to try and reach out to her and it ended up getting back to her family. She immediately went to the doctor and was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. She got to meet the doctor who reached out to her, and as of December 24th, 2020, she reached the five-year mark since her cancer was removed. Everyone laughed at this guy's house until they seen what was inside. This guy served in the US military as a pilot for almost 30 years. When he retired in his 60s, he bought a small little house in San Francisco, California. But the problem was, almost everyone else in his neighborhood was super rich and pretty much lived in mansions. Because of this, his neighbors refused to speak to him and laughed at him when they seen him. One day, when he was sitting on his front porch, a bunch of rich kids showed up at his house and started making fun of him. At first, he was upset, but then he decided to invite the kids inside. And little did they know, he was hiding the biggest secret in the entire neighborhood. But before before I show you what's inside, I found this app that lets you prank your friends and family by dragging these stickers onto their text message to change it. Just press the button on my profile to get it. In his basement, there's a full-size flight simulator with millions of dollars. A musical instrument that can be played without touching it. The theremin was invented by accident in 1920 by the Russian musician and scientist Leon Theremin. He was creating a device that could measure the density of gases but realized what he made produced sound that changed according to your hand position. The instrument consists of a box with two metal antennas on the sides and oscillators that control the frequency and amplitude of sound. The electrical signals produced by the instrument are then sent to a loudspeaker. The first antenna is on the right which controls the pitch. The closer you place your hand, the sharper the sound is. The farther you move your hand away from the antenna, the louder it will be. The theremin has been used several times to create themes for television shows and was played in the 70s by Jimmy Page, who's the founder of the Led Zeppelin band. This guy found 45 rattlesnakes under his house and you won't believe what he did with them. In 2019, a man started having problems with his cable service. He wanted to see if he could fix the problem himself. So he crawled into his crawl space to see if he could find a loose wire. But then he noticed a couple rattlesnakes, which are fairly common in Texas. But their venom can cause nausea, sweating, blurred vision, and even death. So being in an enclosed area with them isn't the best idea. But it got a lot worse when he noticed there wasn't just two snakes, but 45 of them. He immediately got out of there and called Big Country Snake Removal. They then came to his house and took them all out into buckets. The man lived around 40 minutes away from Sweetwater which is famous for a rattlesnake roundup. They round up over 250,000 rattlesnakes in plastic bins before butchering them. Some people say it helps with rattlesnake awareness where other people say it should be banned. The festival organizers pay $10 per pound of snakes so he could have made around $2,700 but instead he chose to have them delivered to a quiet place and released back into the wilderness.
This couple waited 9 years to open their wedding gift but when they finally did it changed their lives forever. Kathy and Brendan got a gift from their friend but she told them not to open it until they got into their first fight. Over the years they had many fights and it even got to the point where they considered getting a divorce. But each time they would eventually end up resolving it so they wouldn't have to open the gift. She said if it wasn't for the gift they wouldn't still be together because it taught them to be patient and understand each other before caving in and opening it. But one day they decided to finally open it and you won't believe what they found inside of it. But before I tell you I found this app that tells you your celebrity look like and apparently I look like Zach King. Just press the button on my profile to try it for yourself and let me know in the comments who you get. In the gifts they found wine glasses, cash, and two notes. One note was for Kathy and it said to buy pizza with the cash and get a bath ready for both of them. The other note was for Brendan and it said to buy flowers and a bottle of wine. Two prison guards who were saved by inmates. In this footage from 2015, 17 year old Jamal Ludridge is being processed at Fort Lauderdale Police Department. As the officer is booking the teenager for burglary, he gets a pain in his chest and collapses onto the floor. The boy looks around and realizes they're alone, so he starts yelling and kicking on the door to get some help, and ended up saving him from a potentially deadly heart attack. They even had a ceremony to honor him. Inmates from a jail in Georgia were at a cemetery watering the plants and cutting the grass. As the day went on, the guards started to hyperventilate due to the heat and collapsed, leaving the prisoners there without any guards. They could have easily ran away, but they didn't. Six of the prisoners rushed immediately to help the guard. They took off his bulletproof vest so he could breathe better and one of them grabbed his phone to call 911. And because they saved a life, all six of them got their sentences reduced by a quarter. This story sounds fake, but it's 100% real. In 2013, Jim Stouffer's mother passed away from Alzheimer's at the age of 74. Doctors told Jim that the disease mutated in a way that they had never seen before, and asked if he was willing to donate her body for brain research. Jim decided to donate it to the Biological Resource Center in Phoenix, which removes body parts for scientific research, then cremates the rest and returns the ashes to the family members. Jim received his mother's ashes, but without specifying what was done to her body. A year later, the center was raided by the FBI, after hearing accusations that they were selling the donated bodies for profit. And among them was Jim's mother who was sold for $5,893. It turns out that the bodies were actually used for US military experiments. And according to investigations, Jim's mother's body was strapped to a chair that was then detonated by a bomb underneath it to understand the effects on a body when a vehicle is hit by an explosive device. Jim and others who were affected sued the center, and in 2019 they were awarded $58 million for the damage, with the center being no longer in operation. This lady got handed a creepy note on the train and you won't believe what it said. In September of 2017, around 5pm, she was on the public transit bus coming home from work when someone from behind her handed her a note written in red ink that said, There are two guns pointed at you now. If you want to live, hand back your phone and wallet now. It also told her not to turn around until after she got off the train. She looked in front of her and couldn't see anyone pointing a gun, but she was getting close to her stop so she had to decide what to do. She could take the chance that no one had any weapons, or she could hand them her phone and wallet. When all of a sudden she got an idea. She pretended to have a seizure and fell over into the middle of the bus. A couple rushed over to her and she slipped them the note. They read it and realized what was actually going on. Then the person who gave her the note realized this and got off the bus at the next stop. There was actually no weapons, it was just a scam to get some money. Two times, good people got good karma. When Dominique Harrison Benson lost her bank card after a night out, she was panicking because she couldn't pay for a taxi and had no other way home. But when a homeless man named Robbie seen her stressed out, he went and offered her his last three British pounds for her to get a taxi home. It was the only money he had, but he was more concerned about her safety than anything. She was so thankful that when she got home, she created a GoFundMe page for the man, which quickly spread around social media. Her goal was to raise 30,000 pounds, but she beat that in no time, getting even more money to give to Robbie and the rest of the homeless people in her town. In 2011, Victor Victor Geisbrick pulled over on the highway to help two girls change their flat tire because no one else would stop for them. Then he continued on his way without expecting anything in return. The two girls then saw his truck pulled over on the side of the road so they stopped to check on him and were shocked to find him in the middle of a heart attack. But luckily one of the girls was a nurse and immediately began CPR saving his life. This guy didn't do any work in a group project so his partner got the ultimate revenge. The girl in the group needed 50% or better to pass the class and graduate, so she calculated that if she got 0% on the project she would still pass. Since her partner didn't want to fail the class, he would call her every once in a while to see how she was doing. The girl kept saying she was almost done it when in reality she hadn't even started it. The day before it was due, he called her to ask her if she could send him the presentation. She sent him an empty powerpoint then shut off her phone so he couldn't call her. The day of the presentation he was nervous, but the girl reassured him by saying she would do everything. When they got up to present to the class she said I already had a good enough grade to pass the class and since my partner decided not to do any work I decided to take the day off. He ended up having to go to summer school but he didn't pass so he has to take his senior year all over again. 
Three Home Alone traps that would kill you. In Home Alone 2, Kevin makes a swinging pipe at the top of the staircase, then throws it at them directly in the face before cutting the rope and letting it fall on them. The first impact would probably be enough to kill them, because a heavy pipe like that would crush a human skull. But if that wasn't enough to kill them, then when Kevin cuts the rope and the pipe falls on them, that would do it. In the first movie, Kevin pours water on the stairs to make ice. Falling down stairs that are concrete can cause a lot of broken bones and even death. The men could have easily broken their necks if they landed the wrong way, and Harry was even close to it when he landed on his back. Finally, in Home Alone 3, Kevin set up a trap where it looks like he's trying to get up somewhere, but it was actually a prop that's attached to a lawnmower by a rope. So when he pulled on it, the lawnmower fell on him. We all know that this would have shredded him, but in the movie, all that happened is he got a nice little haircut.